Hello and welcome to Happier, a podcast about how to be a happier you in 2022. And Elizabeth, I don't know why we have not been saying that all year. I love a rhyme. This week, we'll talk about why you might create a five senses portrait of someone in your life. And we share some thought provoking ideas from listeners about how they're designing their summers. I'm Gretchen Rubin, a writer who studies happiness, good habits, human nature, and the five senses. I'm here in my little home office in New York City, and joining me today from LA is my sister, Elizabeth Kraft. And Elizabeth, I had fun working on your portrait with the five senses. That's me, Elizabeth Kraft, a TV writer and producer living in LA, and I can't wait to hear Gretch. I'm very intrigued. Yes, we haven't told each other what we're gonna say, so that's fun. Yeah. Um, but before we launched in, we got a few updates from some emails from listeners. Yes. Chris said in episode 383, you spoke about getting Liz a t-shirt for her one word theme, Step. As soon as you mentioned it, the iconic Beatles Abbey Road album cover flashed in my mind. Abbey Road remains the only original cover to completely omit the actual album title or band name. And he says a quick Google search brings up some t-shirts with interesting artistic interpretations of this cover. Oh my gosh, Gretch, I have to get one. I looked and there are some really great ones. And the fact is it's Step plus the Beatles. And this is like, I've got a feeling uh, it's, it's a song uh, of the summer. It's like, it's all coming together. Yeah, so I'm going to, I'll get one of those this afternoon. I'll wear it on our YouTube video if anybody wants to see it in, in upcoming weeks. Yes, and you've got your Onward and Upward t-shirt on right now, I can see, which I appreciate. I got do, yes, Gretch. I uh, love it. Yes. I'll put a photo in the show notes for people who aren't watching on YouTube. Okay. Oh, Elizabeth, I think people are really interested in your problem of trying to, to visualize step because we keep getting yes. all these ideas. Leone said... I recently learned that kangaroos can't move backward. So Australia uses it on their coat of arms to symbolize always moving forward. Because listen, that was your ever forward. This made me think of your one word yes. of the year. Have you considered adopting the kangaroo as a mascot this year? And I looked it up and that's true about kangaroos. It's also true about emus. And they are also on the Australian coat wow. of arms. So that's a... Interesting take. Yes, I love the idea of a personal symbol of a kangaroo. That's fun. Um, and then we've also started to hear from listeners about metaphors that they're using from their life. Barbie wrote, regarding a metaphor for my life, I am 76 years old and have gone through many things. I call them chapters. It feels comfortable to recognize events as finite and the building blocks of a great story. Thus, difficult jobs, divorce, financial insecurity, glorious success, the pandemic, and other events are just part of the process. This kind of reminds me, Elizabeth, of how you and Sarah talk about the season of sacrifice, where it makes it feel mm, fine. Yes. It's like, it's it's not easy, yes. but it's limited. And that's sort of a help. That's helpful. So this is yeah. a metaphor that captures that. Yes. And I love it because there's always another chapter. Yes, there's always another chapter. And then Gretchen, we had another email that made us very happy from Hillary. She said, this is already old news, but I'm doing a power month. And it's on an old list to let you know that your organ donation posts resonated with me, especially the happiest day of your life. What a thrill to read about Jamie's cure. I'd already been marked as a donor on my license forever, but I was thinking about living donation and your eloquent post helped my process. I donated my left kidney in December 2020 to a stranger who's now an acquaintance and doing well. For me, I would never know anything was different except for the already faded scars. I'm so glad I did it. Oh my gosh, Gretchen. I mean, how beautiful is that? That is wonderful. What a huge contribution to make to the world. I'll include a link to the blog post she mentioned, because when Jamie had hepatitis C, we were always very worried that she, he might need an organ donation if his liver failed. And so that got me very focused on liver mm -hmm. donation and organ donation in general and how important it is for, for us all to be donors if we can be. But she's really going a step further by really donating a kidney like that. That That's wonderful. Amazing. What a, what a great story. It makes me happy just yes. to think about that. Yes. Thank you, Hillary. So now for the Try This at Home. So I've been doing all this thinking and writing and research about the five senses, which is like the most fun I've ever had in my life. And one of the exercises that I hit on, which I found to be really 
exciting and refreshing and kind of stimulating is to create a five senses portrait of someone. Yeah, Gretchen, I love this because it just, as always, focusing in on something just makes you think about someone and appreciate them and see some nuance and kind of a complete picture. Yeah, and and it's funny because you think, well, like, of course I know everything about this person who I'm married to or who's my sister or I work with every day or my best friend for 30 years or whatever it might be. But what I found is like, you know, I, there were people who were like, I'm not even sure I know the color of their eyes. You know, it's sometimes right. what's most familiar is the hardest to see, which is why something like the album of now was an exercise because it's very hard to notice what's around us all the time or what's very familiar. So this is another way to get at that. And, and it's also, I love crystallized doing something big. And this is sort of an easy way to do it because it's just, you're just filling in like five bullet points for each sense. Of the five senses. So Gretchen, you did a whole portrait for Jamie, five things for each of the five senses. Yeah, so, so that was 25 Yes, things. it is. And so just to give people like an idea of what we're doing. So when I thought of Jamie and I was thinking of seeing Jamie. So I know there are many senses. There might be as many as 33 senses. But it, for my purposes, I just talk about the big five, what you could call the Aristotelian five or the kindergarten five, depending on your point of view. So for the seeing of Jamie, I said, one, the way he folds back newspapers after he's read them. Two, our coat mm. closet full of his jackets, because Jamie loves jackets, so he has a lot of jackets. Three, his body stretched out on the sofa for a Sunday nap because he, I can just picture. Even the, I can. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's like a very characteristic pose, shall we say. Um, and then the four is a memory. It's the beautiful colors. He had this rose red fleece jacket and this chartreuse knit shirt that he was often wearing when we were in law school together and we were just starting to get to know each other even before we started dating and then we started dating. So um, those were like really imprinted on my mind. <laughs> He's got very dark coloring. So these, this pink and this green, I just remember. And then um, his red sweaty face after he's done exercising because <laughs> uh, he's a big exerciser. <laughs> And this was really fun. It was the past and the present and, and really to get me to focus in on him. I love that, Gretch. So we thought we would do this with each other for one of the senses. We would pick five right. things. So you thought of me and touched. And touched, yeah. So when I was thinking, okay, what, when I think of you, where is my sensation of touch going? So this is what I thought of. And let's just see if, you, if these ring true for okay. you about yourself. One, I thought of touching the heavy terry cloth robe you always wear. When I see you in Kansas City, we have one that's in the guest room that you wear, and then you have one yeah. at home that you wear. I am a robe person. You, I wear robes as often as I possibly can. Yes, yes. As a friend of mine said, we were talking about plushie. He was like, a thin cotton robe is no robe at all. I was like, yes, I like a thick, I like a, <laughs> a, you know, a plushie robe. Two, stretchy hoodies, because you do love a hoodie. Yeah, this is true. Three, I thought, this is new, but very much made an impression on me. Okay, the weirdly heavy bodies of Corgi with that soft but also spiky fur. I haven't even met Daisy, but, but Nacho. Like, one of the things that really surprised me, strangely heavy. It's like he's been, like, lined yes. with lead and just so stocky and but then that fur that plushy but spiky fur very distinctive yes oh i love that and yeah gretch he's like holding a pile of bricks <laughs> for sure <laughs> that's wiggling <laughs> uh-huh yes daisy is much less heavy feeling. oh interesting yeah maybe it's just muscle right Number four, this will be no surprise to you. You may have, you know, you would have, I don't know if what you're, what you're doing for me, what sense, but this came in as hot coffee in a heavy mug. You have a certain few mugs that are like mm. my favorite mugs that you have that are like feel just right in the hand. And we always drink so much coffee together that I associate you with the feeling of having coffee in a mug. And then I was stumped on the fifth one. I couldn't think, I couldn't think. And then I realized, oh my gosh, it's the, it should have been the most obvious and the easiest and number one, which is your blankie, which I've, you've had your blankie your whole life. And so I've had your blankie my whole life. And it's, it's, yes. it, it's texture has changed over time as it has become more worn and worn to shreds and tatters. But I, yes. I know the feeling of that, of that, of your special blanket. Yes. I don't know if our listeners know. I don't know if I've ever talked about that. I sleep with a blankie yes. every night that I'm home. It's too precious to take with me when I travel. 
That would that was the first thing that popped in mind was when it? I was thinking about myself. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. If for everything, for sight, smell, touch, not taste, but the blankie. Well, and it's interesting to think about the smell with kind of a lovey object because that's something like if you have a little kid who's got something, that's one of the ways that they figure out you've tried to like do a switcheroo on them. And people have talked uh, about how yes. it's it's sometimes it's the smell is part of what's really comforting about, you know, a blanket or a stuffed animal or whatever. And so, right. Yeah. Maybe you're not tasting it, but all the other four senses could be very, very activated by a special beloved object like that. OK, Alyssa, did that feel accurate? Did I capture you in your own mind? So accurate. Yes, 100 percent. You know me very well, Gretch. <laughs> My favorite is the hot coffee and a heavy mug. The feel yes. of that, because the feel of that is just one of my favorite yeah. feels in the world. Well, the next time we're together, know, we obviously. can really rel- not even just like have it running in the background. Yes. But we can really we can really talk about it and relish it like a sommelier, you know? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so Elizabeth, what did you do for me? I don't even know which sense you picked. Okay, I picked taste. Oh, um, and I have to say, Gretchen, once I started thinking about it, it was it was not difficult oh. because you are a person who eats the same <laughs> things yes, over and over and over. That is true. But I went back, so I did. You know, not just what you do today, but sort of again, my memory of you, what I associate yeah. you with. So. Sweet potatoes. Yes. Because back in the day when you ate carbs, we've talked about this on the podcast, sweet potatoes were your thing. Yeah, there was a right? period. I mean, yes. your absolute favorite thing. Yep. And then monkey bread. Again, Ooh, that's, the oh, old that's going you. way back, way, way, way back. Yes. But you went through a fairly long period of time where you made the most delicious monkey bread in the world. And I miss it. I long for it. I cherish the memory of you dipping each piece in butter and then building it out on the mold. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. But you know what, Alyssa, I think I only actually made monkey bread like two times because it was it's very labor intensive, but no. I think it just made a big impression on you. Oh, that is, I t- in my mind, you made it like 150 times. I, I made a lot of different breads because I liked experimenting with them. Okay. Well, so funny. Then, of course, you have to say Winstead's. Oh, yeah. Of burger. course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, you and I, that's our thats our thing, right. is the Winstead's, well, you eat the hamburger, I eat the cheeseburger. But, you know, we I should have had that in for touch because just even like the feeling of those, yes. their hamburgers are really, really thin. So they're very light just when you pick them up in your hands. So there's a certain kind of crinkly paper, uh, wax paper they're in too. Yeah. Yes. And if we were doing smell, the smell of Winston. Oh my gosh. Is so particular. So how would you love, if we were doing our own private olfactory, we would manufacture Winstead's oh, spray. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Y- yes. Yes. Okay, Gretchen, Diet Coke. Of course, love Diet Coke, drink a lot of Diet Coke. I don't know if listeners know how much Diet Coke you drink a day. (laughs) A lot. It's um, a lot. Yes. It's a lot. Okay, and then for my last one, Gretchen, because you do eat so many of the same things, I have to do just like the palate of what you eat now. (laughs) Because it's all the same many times. So very predictable. um, And that would be... uh, Eggs, bacon, cauliflower, broccoli, smoked turkey, and then, of course, plain Greek yogurt. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I eat a lot of. Right. You eat those things all the yes, time. Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Oh, that's <laughs> That is fun. And I will say specifically with the yogurt, I picture it also goes with the sight thing, because when I think of the taste of plain Greek yogurt, which you eat all the time, I also see you like licking it off the oh, spoon. Oh, well, that, I shouldn't do that. Mom, when it's mom catches me doing that. It's a very particular... It's a very particular way that you eat the yogurt. So it's like a full thing. It's not just the taste of the yogurt. Oh, well, that I should probably work on that. (laughs) Right. Because it's like the sight of it is maybe (laughs) 
not as appealing. But does that feel right? Yes. Even though those are some things that you don't eat anymore, right. it's still, it, it's the complete picture of you in my mind. It is the portrait of you in taste. Well, and I think that's a great example of the fact that people are important to us for the, our, their memories too. So it's the way they are in the present and their current place in our lives. But for people who stretch back, part of what's fun is to think back on old times and what was true in the past. It's, it's in a way that's even more fun to think about because, and this is one of the things I really love about the senses is by focusing in on the senses, sometimes it helps to surface memories that you forgot you even had. And then you think of something like Cheez-Its. I mean, I haven't had Cheez-Its in such a long time, but there was a time when every time we would take that long drive from Kansas City to North Platte, Nebraska to visit our grandparents or drive home, we would get like a special yep. box of Cheez-Its and you and I would eat them in the backseat of the car. <laughs> yes. Yep. It brings up so many memories. Yes. Yeah. And my blankie was there for that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I really do feel like this is a way to tie into the outer world, the senses, perception in a way that's really exciting. But it also, it reminds you of what's going on in the inner. I think about the fact that what does it mean that you love to wear a robe and a hoodie or I don't know, it just gets you starting to think mm -hmm. about kind of the inner life of the person is by studying their outer presence. Yeah, this is such a fun exercise. So do this for someone else or do it for yourself. It's a great know yourself better. And maybe you and I will do that for ourselves, Gretch, because of course, as as we do this, we're thinking about ourselves as well. And it's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. and maybe it's good to do another try this at home or like a know yourself better question yeah. where it's like, do your own five senses portrait. That'd be really fun. Yes. I hadn't actually thought of that. And I think that could be really fun exercise yes. as well. So let us know if you do try this at home and if creating a five senses portrait was fun for you. You. And who did you pick? Let us know on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Drop us an email at podcast at GretchenRubin.com. Or as always, you can go to the show notes. This is happiercast.com slash 387 for images, links, everything we talk about in this episode. Coming up, we have a hack that could save somebody's life. But first, this break. Okay, Gretchen, it's time for our happiness hack. And this is so uh, brilliant. And it's a way to basically save the life of a cyclist. Yes. So maybe in some places this isn't a problem. But this is a really, really big problem in New York because there's so many bicyclists and also like people opening doors because they're getting out of taxis or being dropped off or whatever. And this is the problem of what's called dooring. So this is when a driver who's parked opens their car door just as a bicyclist is riding by. I saw this happen right in front of my apartment. Like somebody opened up their car door. The bicyclist went right in it, and it was like a cartoon. He flipped right over the door. I had never seen anything like it. Fortunately, uh. he was wearing a helmet, and he was fine. He was like knocked kind of breathless, but he was totally fine. But it was terrifying. So, and, and there are signs in taxis like that have these signs like with like these eyes looking, like remember to look before you open your door. But as we all know, it's very easy to forget to do something like that. So this is a solution from the Netherlands. And it's actually been, it's in the United States, we call it the Dutch reach, though apparently they don't call it that. But the idea is, and, and they train everybody to do this, when you are reaching for a car's door handle, either as a passenger or as the driver, you don't open it with your hand that's closest to it. You reach with the, your opposite hand. And when you're reaching for your opposite hand, it forces you to kind of pivot your body and you sort of naturally look over your shoulder. And that sort of gets you started in that motion of looking backward. And that's how you can notice the incoming bikers. And I thought it seemed like such a kind of simple, elegant solution Rather than trying to teach your mind to remember. Remember to look. Yeah, you just yeah. make it the habit to reach that way. All right, I'm going to try to start doing this. Even this is, it'll take some time to have the kind of muscle memory to just do that automatically. But see, in L.A., but, does this um, come what up? What an easy thing to do. In L.A., oh, would yes. this come up? I've, all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, no, Gretchen, a friend of mine, her brother actually died from this. Oh, from someone opening the door and, and flipping over. Oh my gosh. So no, it's a big problem here because a lot of people do cycle because maybe you don't cycle from, you know, Hollywood to Pasadena, but you can go around oh, your part of oh. 
town. Of course, just like anybody. Of course, that's right. Yeah, I just always think of the giant highways. Yeah. No, Jack has a friend who rides his bike to school every day. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. This is a problem. Yeah. So I'm going to start doing that for sure. I will post a link to a story that the BBC did on on this if you want to see like a video of somebody doing it, because I, I, I think it is a really elegant solution. You know, train your body to, to do it. And now we got some great yes. suggestions from listeners about how they are designing their summer. In episode 378, Elizabeth, you and I talked about our summers. You're having the summer of health, which you're working on. I had the summer of rereading, yes. which is not working out at all. So my summer of rereading is not happening. But here are some listeners who had great ideas that they are actually executing on, too. Yes. Tammy says, last summer I did something fun. I called it the ABCs of summer. Throughout the summer, I took pictures that represented each letter of the alphabet, one for each letter. For example, F was for feels like temperature. <laughs> I took a screenshot of showing a feels like temperature of 100. Whoa. I kept a note on my phone to keep track of my progress. At the end of summer, I put all 26 pictures in my family yearbook along with a printed alphabet list and an explanation of the corresponding picture. I can look at this and see the fun places we went, activities we did, and people we saw over the summer. Well, that's lovely. That's fun. That's like so imaginative and fun. Cheryl wrote, last summer, I threw myself into Julia Child, the many biographies, cookbooks, and the movie. We had French Fridays when I attempted French cooking with some success. I added to my skill set and had fun. I can probably answer any question you have about Julia Child. This summer, I'm rediscovering the many works of Nora Ephron. Her essays, books peppered with recipes, yay, more cooking, and her iconic movies that will be worth repeating. Heartburn, When Harry Met Sally, You've Got Mail, Julia and Julia, oh, tied to Julia Child, and there are so many. The rabbit hole has already led me to consider the works of her sister Delia. This is going to be so much fun. I love this idea. Side note, I love the work of Delia Efron as well. I just read Left on 10th, which is her latest memoir. And I love her memoir, or, or I guess it's a book of essays called Sister, Mother, Husband, Dog, Etc. So yeah, <laughs> diving into Nora Efron's work would be tons of fun. Yes. And I would rem be remiss if I did not mention there's also a new uh, scripted show about Julia Child oh, yeah. that a good friend of mine is a consulting producer on. I believe it's on HBO Max. Oh, fun. And also, there, if you're interested in the kind of moderator versus abstainer thing, Delia Efron wrote a really funny thing that basically showed that she's like 100% a moderator. So I, I will also post a link to that if you, you want to read a funny passage from, uh, from oh, her essay. That's great. And then Joanna says, I'm always looking for excuses to do more reading and wanted to do a summer reading challenge, but I couldn't think of an author or subject for a deep dive. Then a conversation with a book club friend reminded me how much I love to connect with people over reading. Yeah. Even if I don't like a book someone recommends, I love talking to them about it and the characters of the book become almost like friends in common. So I decided to ask each member of my close family to recommend one book for me to finish this summer. I told them they could pick any genre or subject, and it could be any length, less than a thousand wow. pages, gulp. I also asked them not to overthink it and only gave them a week to pick in an effort to take the pressure off. Recommending books can be stressful. Yeah. True. The recommendations started coming immediately, and already my summer reading list has everything from Cryptonomicon to the Scarlet Pimpernel. I can't wait to carve out the time to read all these books and even better talk about them with my favorite people. I love this. And you know, there's just something, if you recommend a book to somebody and then they really go off and read it, I, I feel so flattered by that. I, if, if I read oh, a book that yeah, someone recommends, same. I always tell them because I get so much satisfaction oh, from yeah. that. Same with podcasts. Same with podcasts. Movies, TV shows, everything. It, it just feels good when people follow your recommendations. Yeah. And then finally, Laura wrote, I recently set a plan for me and my three children, 10 and under. We are going to work our way to riding to and from a friend's house on our bikes. My youngest doesn't have the stamina for that five plus mile ride both ways. So we will by the end of the summer. I love this. It's like having a family project like that. And this is a good reminder about why you need to use that Dutch reach. Because you got these little kids. That's right. You know? Absolutely. So thank you, everyone, for those Design Your Summers. It makes me feel summery just reading them. Yes. Gretchen, I love I it. I know. Coming up, Gretchen has a demerit related to one of my book recommendations. But first, this break. Okay, Gretch, it's time for demerits and gold stars. And this week, you are up with a happiness demerit. Yes. And so you love audiobooks. 
And you were yes. reading this book called Take the Gun, Leave the Cannoli, and you made it sound so good. And then I thought, and I had tried an audiobook and, and really liked it, one of the Murderbot books. And so I thought, okay, I'll try Take the Gun, Leave the Cannoli in audiobook. And I was very excited and I downloaded it and I listened to the first two minutes and I haven't listened to it anymore. I listen to podcasts with no problem, but somehow it feels effortful to me. I don't know why. I just, I keep, I know if I turned it on and just went for a walk in the park and got immersed in it, I'm sure I would enjoy Mm -hmm. it, but I just can never get myself to push play. You have a real mental block against audio. I I don't know. It's going to take some time. You're going to have to listen to like five that you like in order to like get past that. Uh, maybe you could turn it on while you tidy your office. No, I love, well, this is one of the, I love listening to audiobooks of books that I've already read. If I've already read it, I can listen to it for some reason. Oh. So I do like listening to audiobooks in that way. I have a lot of books that I've listened to, but I also can't listen and multitask. Like I, I can't listen to a book and clean my mm. office. I can walk. I can walk, but that's as much as, I have mm-hmm. a friend who listened to Anthony Trollope's novels, like while she's grocery shopping. I could a hundred percent not do that. I cannot multitask like that. Well, now that you've said it, maybe it'll yeah. inspire inspire you to push play yes. and listen to this book. I'm telling you, it's very, I found it to be extremely entertaining. And now Adam and I are watching The Offer, which is, a, again, a scripted show about the making of The Godfather. So that's oh, interesting. Now, Elizabeth, what is your yeah. gold star? Well, Gretch, I am giving a big gold star to the Kansas City Zoo. Mm. So, you know, I was home recently Our family has been involved and interested in, you know, fans of the zoo for a long time. Way back when, before it was redone, dad took us there all the time as kids. It was free. So he would, and we live close. He would just take us for like half an hour or an hour on Saturdays. And then in more recent years, Kansas City has really put a lot of effort and money into redoing the zoo. And it really is something special. I mean, one thing that's great about it is they have all these different things you can do, like take a sky tram oh. across where they have Africa. Um, you can take a boat ride in the wetlands, a tram around mm. the place. You can take a train around. I mean, it's just different ways to see the animals. And also it's a very large space, so you can get from one place yeah. to another. Ah. And it's green. It's it's just a wonderful experience to go there. And that's not always true for a zoo. Yeah. So I just give a big gold star to the thoughtfulness that has been put into planning it to make it such a great place for families. And there's an aquarium coming next year. So if you're in or near Kansas City, check out the zoo. We're going in a couple of weeks and we haven't been to the zoo in years. So that's great. I'm absolutely putting that on the list. I'm, now I'm dying to see it. So that'll, that'll be great. Wonderful. But go early because it gets oh, yeah. hot. In the summer. <laughs> yeah. In Kansas City, if there's anything you want to do, do it early. <laughs> yeah. The resources for this week. If you love a good Know Yourself Better question and Know Yourself Better journal, I am coming out with a new journal, which is about transitions. Know Yourself Better questions that will help you think through transitions. I'll post a link to that. Mm. It's happiercast.com slash transitions. It's available for pre-order now. It's not ready quite yet. And there is a promo code if you want to have 15% off. So at checkout, use the promo code happierchange15 if you're interested in that. Also, the show notes, you know, we're always talking about what the images and links and everything. I put a lot of work into our show notes so that there's all the information you would want and more. So if you would like to get those by email, you can sign up to get those at happiercast.com slash show notes. And again, in the show notes, I will put that link so you don't have to worry about it. And then, Elizabeth, I made a note that I should have, I should tell people about the Moment of Happiness newsletter. And I can't remember now why. There was some reason where it was like, oh, I need to mention mm. that. I can't remember the reason, but maybe I, I, I don't know. But if it came up for some reason, if you want my daily happiness quotation, my Moment of Happiness newsletter, go to GretchenRubin.com slash newsletter and you can choose it there. What are we reading? Elizabeth, what are you reading? I am reading The Summer Place by Jennifer Weiner. Mm. What are you reading? I am reading Toni Morrison, The Last Interview and Other Conversations. And I just want to say, this is a series of books. It's, they're called The Last Interview. I found it because I was looking for material about James Baldwin. And then I realized they have 
all kinds of people. So I actually just checked out the one about Nora Ephron, inspired by our listener. Mm. There's Johnny Cash. <laughs> there's Frida Kahlo. There's, I think it's more than 35 different figures. So if there's somebody that you're interested in, it's like some really good interviews with them. And then their last interview. And they're short, but really, really accessible and fun. And if there's somebody, if you're becoming a minor expert in someone, you could look and see if you could find them there. So I now I'm reading the one that has interviews with Toni Morrison, and it's great. And that's it for this episode of Happier. Remember to try this at home. Create a five senses portrait of someone close to you. Let us know if you tried it and if it worked for you. Thanks to our executive producer, Chuck Reed, and everyone at Cadence 13. Get in touch. Gretchen's on Instagram at Gretchen Rubin, and I'm at Liz Craft. Our email address is podcast at GretchenRubin.com. And if you like this show, once again, you can really help us out by recommending it to a friend. That's how most people find the show. Or rate, review, and follow us in a podcasting app. That also really helps the show. Until next week, I'm Elizabeth Croft. And I'm Gretchen Rubin. Thanks for joining us. Onward and upward. I put my headphones on backwards so the things go over, like, put it on like this. Oh. So then the wires aren't visible. Oh, I should do that. Yeah, just put it like behind your head and yeah. Oh, you're wearing onward and upward. That's reach. great. Sorry, did it. I don't want to mess up your hair. I don't think mine will reach. Okay. I need a longer cord. Okay. I got that super long cord, you know. The other that day. would be much better. Thank you for watching our podcast here on YouTube. If you enjoyed it, please hit subscribe right below the video. It really helps our channel. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the show. From the Onward Project.